Perhaps you've never bought a coffee grinder, or you already have one and you think it's crap and you want something else, or you've had a lot of grinders and you're still looking for something that fits you the best. Well, in today's video, I want to walk you through the different steps I think are necessary in order to find the perfect grinder for you. I thought I'd make a video addressing kind of the series of questions I like to ask in order to help you hone down a decision for which grinder is right for you. Now, before we get into these five kind of questions I like to ask, I would ask that you first and foremost, do not get a blade grinder, okay? I'm Bird Daddy. we don't do blades here, we do cones and flats and maybe hybrids. We play around with the idea of roller mills, but that's in the far future. But in, in the end, no blades. If that is what's on your countertop. If that's what you're thinking about buying, just don't buy a burr grinder instead, whether it's a cone burr, which you'll probably find for cheaper, or a flat burr. Something like that is a much better option for you. You'll have much better particle consistency. Blades, you don't, you're, you're just as well taking a knife and don't do a blade grinder. Bird Addy, what am I needing to get to make some beautiful coffees? The first thing I say is, well, I need to know what your budget is. Now, the way I like to think in terms of budget is in four different classes. You have kind of the cheap class, like the really cheap, the budget-friendly class, which is, you know, essentially as cheap as you can go up to about 300 US dollars. That to me is kind of like the really low, low budget, like let's get really tight. Then you have kind of mid-tier. That's anywhere from, in my, in my book, kind of like 300 to about $700. These are the people that, you know, they're thinking the next step I must make is a more expensive grinder. They're really getting into the gear part of it, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And they want to move up to this mid-tier. They want to know that their grinder is going to last a long time. And so they, they open up a bigger budget, they save up in order to hit this kind of mid-tier. Next would be kind of high tier, like the high budget people. So people who can do 700 to 1,000 bucks. Oh my goodness, that's so much money. And it is. You can't just, you know, call them all coffee snobs because you're used to your cheap coffee at home. That might be, you know, $4 for a bag of coffee. You have to remember that there are people who have different passions. You have audiophiles who are buying hundreds of dollars worth of earphones that hit different bases and trebles and frequencies. You have people who are really into golf that spends thousands of dollars on golf clubs. You have people who are into baking and they buy different types of mixers and different types of things in order to pursue that passion. For a lot of people, coffee is a passion. And so when they have extra money set aside, they put it towards a grinder. So you have people that are willing to spend $700 to $1,000 to get a really nice high quality grinder. But then there is a fourth tier and this is for the very, the, the very, very few. And I know most of you watching this, this is going to like, you're going to be like, oh my God, there are people spending that for grinders. But the, the, four, the last tier I like to call kind of luxury. And this is absolutely unnecessarily highly priced uh, grinders, but it's for people who are really looking for an experience when they're using their coffee. They're wanting to push out that extra 5% of taste that they can get from something that's more precisely built. They want something that's going to last a long time and they can kind of have their end game grinder. So over $1,000. Now, there a lot of these are, cost three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000, uh, but we're just going to kind of lump that there. So where are you at in your budget? How much money do you have the ability to set aside for or something daily like grinding coffee. So once we have that, we can shell, shell off a ton of different grinders. We can say, okay, this is your budget. All right, let's not look at these grinders. Let's not look at these grinders. We have a very specific set of grinders we can kind of discuss. Second question I like to ask people is, do you need an electric grinder or are you fine with manual grinding? Now, of course, in the luxury zone, this doesn't really apply to many grinders. I think the Malawi is over a thousand and the Weber Workshops HD2 is over a thousand dollars, but you don't really have many manual machines, obviously in that price range, because a lot of what inflates prices of grinders is all the mechanics involved and the, the engine, the motor, all this different stuff. Are you okay with manual or do you need electric? Generally, you can get a higher quality manual grinder at the same price that you'll get an electric grinder. Let's say your budget's $300. A company that builds an electric grinder that costs $300 and a company that builds a manual grinder that costs $300. Let's say both of their cost was $100. So they have a $200 profit margin. With the electric grinder, they have $100 in order to buy a motor at wholesale. They have to buy the drivetrain. They have to buy all these different things in order to make all of that work on the same budget the hand grinding company has to make just really solid pieces of metal fit together with good 
good tolerances to provide a cup of coffee. So not only do you have more money for higher quality pieces at the same price point, but you have something with less failure points, which is something that's very important to consider because with electric grinders, especially when you get cheaper and cheaper, they tend to have parts that kind of fail on you. There's gonna be different qualities that, that are gonna come out of this, both in terms of longevity, as well as the quality of your experience. Obviously, a lot of people don't want to hand grind every single day, especially if you're doing espresso, but some people enjoy it. It's part of the ritual for them, in which case, more power to you. You can get a higher quality cup, for the most part, out of a similarly priced hand grinder, and you'll more than likely have a much longer life out of it. Not to mention portability and just the size feature where you can just shove it wherever you want and it won't take up much space. Now my third question, uh, it kind of centers on how do you enjoy your coffee? Do you do all filter? Do you do all espresso? 80% filter and 20% of the time I do espresso. 60, 40, 75, 25, whatever it might be. Are you filter first with espresso back, espresso first with filter back, or are you kind of one or the other? This is going to greatly push out a lot of grinders. There are some grinders that are fantastic at filter out of the box, but not so great at espresso. You may need to change a burst set in order to hit espresso, or you might need to put a lot of more effort in on a hand grinder to hit espresso. I have worked with over 70 or 80 grinders, over 100 burr sets, and I can tell you confidently that there has never been a single burr set that does filter just as well as it does espresso, at least as in terms of how it could do relative to other burrs. You really need to specify which burr set you're getting in order to optimize one or the other. So you don't really have a one burr to rule them all kind of situation. There are some that do them both well, don't get me wrong, but usually you're sacrificing a little on one if you're optimizing the other. Okay, if it's mainly espresso, we need something that has a very specific dial on it. Something like, let's say we have the under $300 budget, something like the Encore ESP. The first 20 steps on that Encore, they give you eight microns of adjustments. So that means you have really fine granular adjustments, which is very important for espresso. Whereas if you were to go for something like uh, the fellow Ode and you're trying to do espresso, well, first, the motor isn't even capable of, of grinding at espresso consistently. It'll die really quickly, but also the steps are way too big to focus on espresso. So if we're doing espresso first and foremost, we automatically can roll out the fellow Ode for the sub 300, and we can take into consideration something like the Brazza Encore ESP. So it's a very important question to further take out other candidates in order to really focus in on what you are looking for. We're gonna look at the burrs, we're gonna look at the way that it grinds the coffee, we're gonna look at how long it's gonna take to grind the coffee, and all of this leads us into the fourth thing we're going to consider. It's a catch-all kind of thing. Aesthetics, workflow, sound, anything that kind of falls under that umbrella. Are you in Manhattan with a tiny apartment and you need something with a teeny tiny footprint? Or are you out in you know northern Texas where you have sprawling land and you have a ton of space? What is the aesthetic you're going for? Does sound matter? Because typically noise dampening measures are not included until you pay a little bit more. So you know, like for instance, a really great kind of mid-tier grinder is the Brazza Sete if you're doing espresso only, but it's incredibly loud. So if noise is an issue for you, you might want to change and look at maybe the Eureka Mignon lineup. They have like rubber gaskets underneath the motor so it doesn't vibrate as much and it kind of dampens a lot of that noise. Do you want a single doser or do you want a hopper? Are you someone that wants to weigh out your coffee beans every day uh, and, and keep your, your beans fresh in the bag so they're not just sitting in a hopper? Or does that not bother you? You go through so much coffee, you just want to dump coffee in a hopper, put it on top and good to go. Do I like how the adjustment dial is? Is it stepless or is it stepped? Do I like the on off button? Does it is it plasticky or does it feel nice? Does it fit the aesthetics of your kitchen or do you not give a crap? Are you someone who can tinker really well? You enjoy kind of fixing things, you enjoy taking things apart and re-putting it together, or are you someone that really needs someone to hold your hand? Then you want to work with a company that's well-established with great, robust customer support. So I've brought up Barazza a couple of times. In the United States, I know they have phenomenal customer service. I don't know of any equal outside of luxury grinders that equals their customer service capability, but the issue with Barazza is they're pretty plasticky. They don't look as good as some of these other grinders, so you might be failing there. The elephant in the room is the GI Oda or the uh, Turin DF64. This is something that's very famous right now on the home market because it's really well priced at around $300, $400. You can switch in and out different types of 64 millimeter burrs, but it's made pretty cheaply in the sense that there are things you probably want to do whenever you get it. Granted, they are making different versions, different iterations to improve upon the stock version of them, but in the end, there tends to always be a little something off that you might need to tinker around and mess with. When you get something that is from 
from a reputable company or someone that has robust customer support, you might not really have to worry about that as much. And if anything does ever happen, you are essentially under warranty where they're gonna fix it for you. With most of these grinders on the market, if it has a name at all in the, in the public, then you are gonna be able to find a forum online with different tips and hints and tricks. That's the beauty of, the, of kind of the expanding online social world is now you have whole groups dedicated to specific grinders. So if you're watching this and you're kind of new to coffee, yes, let's say you buy a, a, a niche coffee grinder. Let's say you get one and you're very lost. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to start. You don't know anything. All you have to do is go niche grinder coffee group on Google and Facebook groups will come up. Links to Discord groups will come up. You'll see Reddit threads about this and you can go in and these people all want to help. Of course, there are going to be trolls out there. Get rid of these trolls who are just not helping the furthering of the coffee. Oh my goodness, there's a Facebook group dedicated to every machine, every niche machine, every style of Breville, every style of DeLonghi. You can find a group for it with people willing to help. When you start talking about flavor profiles, you're starting to get objective on something that's purely subjective. Now I have a previous video where I break down cones versus flats when it comes to flavor. People say, oh wow, this flat tastes like a cone. There's no such thing as tasting like a cone, because that's presupposing there's some sort of objective sensory experience when tasting a cone ground coffee, but that's not the case. There is a lot of overlap between flats and cones. There are cones that taste like flats, which means high clarity or tea-like body or something like that. And there are a lot of flats that taste like cones, which when people say that, they mean chocolatey, thicker body. So there's no real flat or cone tasting profile. So really, whenever you're at a certain uh, price point, you're, you're, you're really kind of stuck with just a few options. If we open up our budget, then you can add that as kind of like a sixth option. If they're drinking more specialty coffee, I'll ask, okay, what flavor profile are you looking for? Let's say they're doing mostly filter, sometimes espresso. They have a $200 budget and they want chocolatey, thicker bodied coffees. Immediately, I'm saying you need to get the J Max from Easy Presso. And the reason for this is it's a hand grinder for $200. It's gonna last a long time. It has great granularity for espresso at 8.8 .8 microns per click. And it gives you a more traditional type of cup. And I know there's a big online uh, agreement that the J Max does that. It's a good way to kind of look into it and see what the broader consensus is. And this would fit both both espresso and filter and give the flavor profile the person is looking for. But I know the majority drinker is just looking for something that's gonna do what it's set out to do. So a lot of people, I think the Eureka Mignon series would be a great option because those things are built really well. They have a decent amount of retention, but they work super well. They're not very loud. They don't need a lot of repairs and it's a very reputable company. If you want the best overall experience and you have a $200 budget, you do filter and you want clean, bright, crisp coffees, I'm recommending something like the Easy Presso ZP6 or the K-Series. Someone that's 50-50 espresso and filter and you want a hand grinder to $300, the K-Series from Easy Presso does a fantastic job. If you are someone that has that same budget and wants only traditional espresso, Kinu, or you can go with an electric, which I would recommend something like Fellow Opus or the Brazza Encore ESP or the Mignon Silencio. Another great bargain grinder would be the, the Mignon Specialita. And then you go up to kind of more mid-tier, you have like the Malkuneg X54, you have the Brazza Vario, you have uh, you keep moving up, you have the Brazza Forte, then you move into the uh, the realm of like the Zerno grinder, the P64, you move into luxury, you have like the Weber Workshops grinders, the Coffitex, the Tituses, you have the Option O's, there's so many different options out there. So I know that you may have been watching this video hoping I'll tell you exactly what you need for your specific inquiry, but that as you can see is impossible. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of grinders on the market. I can't sit here and tell you exactly what you need for every single route, for every single you know, combination of those five things that we went over, especially if you include the sixth of your preferred flavor profile, mostly if you're drinking specialty coffee. And I keep saying that because kind of the lower quality coffee you drink, the kind of darker roast you drink, the less play with flavor there is, the less it really matters kind of the particle distribution. That's why you'll go into cafes that are really old school using commodity coffee. They have an old grinder they've probably never changed the burrs on that's dirty and caked with oils and you'll see incredible crema come out and you won't see any channels. It's because when you roast really dark, you don't really need distribution of the coffee in your portafilter. You don't really need a great grinder because the brittleness of the beans and how it's ground up and how the structure is physically is going to really aid in the extraction to give you something that looks 
decent, even if it's not. The viscosity is so high, it's gonna kind of trap in a lot of the channels and, it, and it's gonna be fine. And it's gonna taste the way it's gonna taste because you kind of roast out a lot of the nuance. I obviously have a ton of different reviews of different uh, tiers of grinders. You have other great reviewers online, like the Coffee Chronicler, you have Kyle Rosell, you have, uh, I think Emily Bryant's done a couple, and obviously Daddy Hoff, James Hoffman. So you have other reviewers who are doing all these different uh, grinders that you can take into consideration. The grinder is the most important part of your setup outside of your coffee coffee itself. Really try to make sure that you're increasing your budget for that. And if you're doing an espresso machine as well, decrease the budget for the espresso machine and add that money to the grinder. The grinder is going to make your coffee taste so much better. I hope it was helpful. Uh, if you, you know, if you liked what you saw, you know, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe. All that stuff really helps me. Um, I have a cool Patreon below where we have a Discord connected to it and chat a lot. Uh, but anyway, I hope that you brew something tasty today and cheers.